come to Good Hope Christian Center and I've got my very dear, not only friend, but a son. Love you, Raph. Love you, Pastor Wendy. And uh, our theme for 2021 is anchored. Yeah. And the Lord gave you the song. So yeah. tell me the story about how you got the song. So I remember uh, sometime last year we were at the back, the green room, and Pastor Nev was telling me about like the 2021 uh, theme, which was like anchor. And I remember I created like I had a hook, only like the hook idea, idea of the hook, but I never had like like verses or bridge or anything like that. Cause for past few months I've been like struggling to write music because I never had like inspiration. So I remember I only had like the hook and um, I remember the time when you, you called me to let me know about about past nav uh, passing. Um, so I came to the uh, I remember the four, was I think it was during the week I came to the office. Usually I'll like I'll like spend so much time like writing. Yes. But this time I just had like so much inspiration. And that way I know Pastor Grunkin bought bought on this. Like I was just getting ideas wow. just coming. So I wrote like the song just came. The juice was back. The juice just came like super quick, <laughs> and I just started. I literally just was writing it from uh, from from my heart and like dedicating the song to God as well as passing it. And and the meaning of the song, some of these words. So, so there's a the part of the song where I say like God, like God, you hold me down, like how an anchor holds a boat, like a, a boat or keeps God keeps me grounded. Is my anchor like for me the anchor uh, resembles like hope, yes. the hope God gives me, and He keeps me grounded. And there's also a part where uh, I say, uh, "We thank God we made it. All we needed was patience. Because sometimes, because we don't have patience in ourselves, patience in God, and we don't really like take." We don't appreciate life and we just make decisions according to how we feel and also just like sometimes we are ungrateful for like the gift of life that's why i just i thank god we made it because it was like a tough year for a lot of us yes. and i'm just giving thanks to god and it's a great declaration of faith for 2021 we've made it to, through we today it. we're going to make it through tomorrow because jesus christ is the same yesterday today yeah. and forever, forever. And the Bible says he's our anchor that has gone into the presence of God. So we're going to hold on to him and we're going to make it. Thank exactly. you, Raph. Thank you, I Basil. love you. Love you I so love much. You. And your girls are our, was that, we're our 2020 double yeah. <laughs> blessing. The Lord gave them twins in 2020. Can you imagine? <laughs> God's just been grateful. I'm just so grateful so and thankful for everything God's been doing in my life and also just stay prayed up and praying for you thank you and we love you and i'm sure all of us we are for you thank you well i love you let's worship the lord together anchored hey, hey. my life is you in christ i trust that's true hey my life is you hey uh, be you don't change in christ i trust that's true hey be you don't change it We thank God We made it All we needed was patience We thank God We made it hey. We thank God We made it All we needed was patience We thank God We made it hey. I just gotta say something one time hey. Hey. You give me light that's how I shine Hey, whoa, you the anchor of my life and you hold me down. I give you my heart, Lord, I waste no time. You hold me down, down, yeah. You hold me down, God, you hold me down, yeah, yeah. You gave me hope, God, you hold me down, yeah. And God is love and is my anchor, yeah. Gives me hope and holds me down, oh yeah. And 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you my anchor, God, you my hope, my hope. You my anchor, God, you hold me down. Yeah, 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 yeah. No giving up, don't stress, no, no. And no giving up, no stress, no, no. Hey. And God is love and is my anchor, yeah. Gives me hope and holds me down, oh, yeah. He's my anchor, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you my anchor, God, you my hope, my hope. You my anchor, God, you hold me down, yeah, 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 yeah. My life is you, in Christ I trust, that's true, hey. My life woo, is you, hey. Uh, be you, don't change. In Christ I trust, that's true, hey. Be you. Don't change it. We thank God, we made it. Only one that wants patience. We thank God, we made it. We thank God, we made it. Only one that wants patience. We thank God, we made it. Come on, stand your feet, say, Jesus, you're awesome in power. Might say the same man. Giving me all that I needed It's life in abundance Come on. You took away all my burdens Yes, you opened the curtains That I may go right into your face And we see grace I can't wait for the day Clap your hands and 
let's give him praise. With this unity, God says, I'm going to command a blessing. Come on, God's commanding a blessing right now as you worship him. He's a mighty God. We're going to declare it right now that our God is a mighty God. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, sing it. Hallelujah, what a mighty God, what an awesome sound. Yeah. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, you are. Hallelujah, what a great God you are.
want to take a moment right now before our service just to speak to those who've been watching from our church in Belleville and this is a special season God's raised up an awesome team and uh, I've asked Pastor Andrew to come and share a word with us this morning for the church in Belleville because you know some people might leave some people went, some people were sent, and uh, nevertheless, Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates, thank you, thank you, and the gates of hell will not prevail, prevail against, against it. it. Isn't that true, Hallelujah. Andrew? Yes. Share amen. with us this morning. God is so awesome. Thank you, Pastor Wendy. So for those of you that are watching, I'm Pastor Wendy. And this is Pastor Andrew from the Belleville campus, but we're all one great team building the church together to see the name of Jesus high and lifted up. Thank you, Pastor Andrew. Good morning, Good Hope Christian Center, Belleville. Yes, you are part of my family, but you know our family is much bigger than just Belleville. We are all over the world. Amen. Because we are the body of Christ. And this morning, you know, there's so many things happening around us. You know, there's a lockdown. We are in our homes. But you know, we don't want to be locked down in our hearts. That's good. Because Jesus Christ has set us free. He came to set us free and He came to give us hope. He came to give us that faith to believe in Him. And this morning, I like the word for this year, to be anchored in God. You know, 1 Peter 1 verse 21 says, and I'm, and I'm quoting the last part of it, so that your faith and hope are in God. Our hope and our faith are not in people. And I want to encourage you that, you know, there's so many people as family members, as most probably died throughout this time. But I don't want to speak about that this morning. I want to speak about the hope that we have. And also they've gone to be with the Lord in a much better place than what we are and so this morning i just want to talk to you a little bit about this word and also to encourage you not to stay away when everything opens up not to stay away from the church because the church is there to support you and where we have faith in god and we can worship him in spirit and in truth you know the gospel is so simple all we have to do is obey him you know deuteronomy 1 uh, uh, 28 verse 1 simply says the following now he says now it shall come to pass now, everything shall come to pass yes. it's now it's not tomorrow he's talking about now if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today today is the day that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And I think this word already encourages me that we're going to have an awesome time throughout 2021, Pastor Wendy. Amen. And I'm so glad that we can just talk to Belleville. Belleville, you know, to stay in the word. And that is how you build your faith. Don't, I, don't, I want to encourage you, although you're at home with your families, stay in the word stay prayerful pray with one another and and you know that all this negativity will go because the word will replace the negativity of this world and you know the world wants us to be depressed the world wants us to be discouraged but i'm preaching this morning and tell you that there is power there's there's the willingness to live that is where we must be at this stage the willingness, willingness to live and also to preach the word of God in and out of season. You know, WhatsApp, Telegram, Signal, whatever platform you use. Oh, Andrew, you up on all the things. <laughs> Pastor, when I'm telling you I'm connected. <laughs> I am connected. You're connected you know? with heaven. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> you know, I'm not using my WhatsApp to send all these negative messages. Come I'm on. sending messages to the unbeliever that is in my group. 
to the unbeliever because we as Christians we like to talk to other Christians but you know the gospel of Jesus Christ is simple it is beyond our Christianity we get saved yes but we must carry on with God we must grow in God we must grow in our faith and I truly believe that Belleville you're gonna explode this year you're going to be powerful this year. And also when Bible school starts, I want Belleville to enroll because the Word of God needs to get into your heart. And when situations get tough, the Word will come out of your heart and will speak to every situation. And it will change, Pastor Wayne. Word it will change. Amen. You know, I was reminded right now while you were talking that and we've just come through the Christmas season. And the Bible says that Mary held Jesus in her arms. She was holding the Word, but the Word was really holding Amen. her. Amen. And sometimes things might look difficult. I, th I imagine that as a young mother, she looked at that child and thought, how am I going to do this? But that Word was going to hold her. And things might look difficult, but the Word will hold you and I. This is where the reality of our faith steps in. So I'm going to ask Pastor Andrew to pray for you this morning. Amen. As you trust the Lord, hold hands together as you're watching. Perhaps stretch your hands out to the screen. Whatever it is the Lord's asking you to do, just do it as an act of faith in agreement as Pastor Andrew prays today. Father, we give you glory, we give you all the praise because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. And Lord, I speak to those this morning that wanted to switch off this channel. But Father God, I speak to them to listen to the voice of God that's speaking to them right now because the Holy Spirit, the anointing of God is carried through His Word. And this morning, I thank you, Father. Those who are discouraged this morning, I speak a word of faith over them that we need to trust in the Lord, obey in His, His Word, and also that His Word, there's so many benefits to the life of Christians and believers, those who believe in Christ Jesus. And I pray God this morning, where you sit in your homes, that the Word of God will encourage you. Father God, this morning, I bind every word that's negative, that's came into their homes, that give but keep, uh, that makes them hopeless. There's hope in, the, in Christ Jesus. There's hope in His Word. And the Word will never be shaken. The Word of God will stand. And it has stood the test of time. And so God, this morning, I thank You that You anoint every family member this morning and those who are listening around the world. That Lord God, You anoint them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. I pray the precious blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us for us on the cross of Calvary, Lord, over each and every home and every family member. And Father, I thank you for the word will change us. The word will save us. And I thank you, Father, for miraculous and supernatural salvations, Father, that goes around this world. Father, be ignited by the word of God, by the word of God. And I pray the anointing of God shall be fresh over us, Father shall fall afresh from heaven. Father God, I pray now that the people of God will feel your presence. That Lord, that the presence of God will come over their hearts and they will have peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Peace of God over each and every home shall cover us now. Because the word of God, the word of faith, is a now word. It's not a tomorrow word, but it's now. It's yes and amen. It will accomplish what it's sent for in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, God's word is yes and amen. Every promise that God has said will accomplish everything that was sent forth to do. This word is for you. Say, Amen, 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 Amen. It is so. It is so. Come on, declare, Amen. Amen, 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 Amen. It is so.
know, Pastor Grant, I yes, heard uh, they were opening the, the parliament in America. Yes. And uh, they got somebody to pray. And when they closed in prayer, yes. they didn't say a, only amen. They said a amen. woman. <laughs> so... But I that's think, probably true, Pastor Winnie, because, <laughs> because in reality, the women do rule the world. So they run the well, world. <laughs> So, but I, I think it's a bit of a misnomer because the word amen yes. has got nothing to do with men amen. or with women. The word amen in the Bible is a Hebrew word and it means so, so be, be it. it. That's so be it. Amen. So, so be they it. removed the meaning of the word. But this morning we say so be it according to thy word. And so I'm so glad to be with you this morning. So glad to be with this amazing team. Thank you guys for coming out and worshiping with us. Thank you to everyone who are watching us. And uh, I'd like to take a moment right now and ask you to go with me in your Bibles to the book of Ruth. And the book of Ruth has become a source of great strength to me. I, I taught the book of Ruth in the Bible school. And for those of you who are thinking about studying and beginning a new year in 2021, I want to encourage you to join the Bible school because it's God's word that enables us to say, so be it. And of course, it's been quite a difficult season for me and uh, I can't sa sail down the river denial, you know. We've talked about that many times. We have to get up and walk forward and hold on to God's word because his word says, so be it, so be it. And uh, so I'd like you to go with me in the book of Ruth. And the book of Ruth is quite a dramatic story. It's the story of uh, Ruth, of course, and um, three women who became widows. And I identified with, with that as I began to read it. And uh, it was quite a shocking identification to begin with, but the, the thing that gave me great courage was that Naomi was Ruth's mother-in-law, and Naomi had left Bethlehem, or the land of Israel, with her husband and two sons and gone down to the land of Moab, and Moab was a place where they did not serve the God of Israel, they did not worship God, they were heathen, and these two girls married her sons and her sons died and then her husband died. And they heard that God was visiting his people by giving them bread. And in this season, 2021, where, you know, we look at the governments around the world, we look at the situation around the world and they're talking about lockdowns and financial collapses and how terrible things are going to be. But here they were experiencing famine, but they heard that God was visiting his people by giving them bread. And God will visit you and give you bread as you're obedient to him. And uh, Ruth and Naomi and, and Orpah begin their journey back to Bethlehem. And Ruth says to Naomi, I'm going to stay with you. And uh, Naomi says to Ruth and, and Orpah, go back. You've got nothing to come to. You don't have any family. You don't, have, you don't know the, the land. You know nothing about the way people live. And Orpah decides to go back to her family and go back to her old lifestyle. But Ruth says something amazing that I want you to say with me today. Those of you who are watching from Good, Hope, from Good Hope Christian Center and around the world, that you've committed and made this church your home, that you too will say exactly what Ruth said. Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. For wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. The God that we serve here 
at Good Hope Christian Center is a God of faith, hope, and love. The constant expectation of good. When we took to the streets and we marched for a million seats on the streets, when we took, when we started out 2020, we said unlock section 31. We did not know the kind of impact we were going to make on this nation and around the world. And I want to ask you to continue to make this march forward with me and with the team here at Good Hope Christian Center. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. And it says, and the Lord do so to me and more if anything but death parts you from me and she followed Naomi back to Bethlehem and this was a great step of faith and in this season God's asking you and I to take a greater step of faith faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen we can't see it we can't feel it we can't taste it we can't touch it but faith comes to us by the word we trust God's infallible word and God gives Ruth a miracle she goes to reap in a man by the name of Boaz's field and he takes supernatural care of her and verse 11 of chapter 2 says and Boaz answered and said to Ruth it has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband and how you've left your father and mother in the land of your birth and have come to a people who you did not know God sees your sacrifice God sees your faith those of you who've come to this country as foreigners God sees your faith I, I don't know what miracle you're trusting God for, but God, just like he saw Ruth's faith, he'll see your faith. And then it goes on in the next verse, verse I beg your pardon, verse 12, and it says, the Lord, isn't this beautiful? The Lord will repay you. Won't you say that? Lay your hand on yourself today and say, the Lord will repay me. The Lord will repay my work. And then he goes beyond and he says, a full reward will be given to you by the Lord God of Israel. Not by a man, not by this good looking Boaz, the Lord God of Israel, the Lord God who you and I trust and serve, under whose wings you have come to find refuge. And for many of us, Psalm 91, the Bible says we take refuge in the shadow and under the shadow of his wings. And so today, as you come to give to the Lord, as you stay committed to Good Hope Christian Center, and you say with me where you go, I'm gonna go. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. And the Lord in turn is going to say to you, I am going to take care of you. I will repay your work. A full reward will be given to you as you give in your tithe and in your offering to the Lord. He says a full reward will be given to you by the Lord under the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. So today, as we come to give to the Lord, we find our refuge under his wings because he promised that he would rebuke the devourer for your and my sake. He promised that he would provide for us. And so just like he provided for Ruth and Naomi as widows, women without anything, God will provide for you because we come to take refuge under his wings and under his shadow. Can we do that to a thousand generations, Pastor God? I love this song of the team will come and join me because it's such a declaration of faith as you give and you go online and you can see the give button and uh, the giving instructions are there. 
And thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your words of kindness. There, it's, it's very difficult for me to express my gratitude. But the Lord will repay you for your work under whose re- wings we take refuge. Thank you. Let's do that together. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Holland preaching and ministering for us. 
And it's an amazing word, the uh, last war room that Pastor Nev did with him. He was such an encouragement to us. And he encouraged us with the words that the more the church is oppressed, the more the church is pushed down, the greater she will flourish, the greater she will strengthen, the stronger she will rise. And so this morning he has a great word for us on the omnipresence, the omnipresence of God. You know, in this season, some of you are saying, Pastor Wend, how are you doing? Well, I want to say to you that God told me he would give me supernatural wisdom. By wisdom, a house will be built. It's going to be built and strengthened. And uh, he said, the trauma and the grief doesn't get smaller. It won't get smaller. But we will get bigger. Amen. We will get bigger. Amen. So whatever you're going through, it might not go away, but you will get bigger. You say, well, what about, I cry a lot, but the pain is the love. And so I want to say that to each one of you who are going through trauma. And I'm going to be sharing with you next week on trauma, how Jesus dealt with trauma. How Jesus heals us in our trauma. How Jesus helps us in our trauma. And so the pain is the love. And so we walk on forward together. So God bless you as you enjoy and allow Prophet Prost to minister to you. Father, I thank you for your servant today that as he ministers your word, that faith arises in our hearts. Men and women are strengthened. We are healed. We are made whole by the power and presence of your spirit. Holy Spirit, you come as the sovereign and divine comforter. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. And God's people said, Amen. Thank you, Prophet Cross. When I prepared for this sermon, I heard the Lord say, I am. Open with me, please, the book of Exodus 3, verse 7. Exodus 3, verse 7 says this. The Lord says, I've surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry on account of the taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. Therefore, I have come to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians. Verse 14 says, And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, You will say this to my children of Israel. I am has sent me to you. The people of God, Israel, were going to a very difficult time. They were going as a tribe to a very, very difficult situation. They were enslaved. They were under, underpaid. And they were treated bad by the Egyptians. And the Lord uh, uh, told Moses and said, Surely... Uh, this is so funny. Surely I've seen the afflictions with other words, and I have heard their cry. With other words, uh, when people start to cry out to God, it is that, it, it, that is the moment when God starts to revenge for his people. So when people cry out to God, it is the start of the revenge of the Lord. Good Hope Christian Center. The Lord has heard your cry and he sees your uh, and he sees your sorrow. And I believe that God says, I will come down on your behalf and I will deliver you out. Turn to your neighbor on your left and say, he will deliver me out. When Moses heard these words, he said, how are they going to believe me? That you said, uh, that, that you gave me this plan. How will they know that it was you who, who gave me this plan? And then God told Moses and said, I am who I am has sent me. 
what God actually was telling Moses was what God did what, what God did was in times of sadness in times of broken dreams in times of lost hopes in time of seeing the world around you falling in parts God in, uh, uh, he encouraged the believers to reflect on who God is hallelujah what God is saying whatever you go through act is what act is when you when you need hope act is what act is is always there when you need a healing act is what act is he will he will heal you when you need a breakthrough for your life act is what act is he will give you the breakthrough for for your needs act is the hope for genezing act is the act is the hope for doorbrak for your labor you have to understand this god is always there for you this is so excited so so people when 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 who are much smarter than me made this theologian uh, study on this sub subject and called these studies the attributes of the Lord. And they made a, a, a collective word. At that time, Latin was the religious spoken language and they gave a collective word of who God is. And they said, God is omni. And the translation of omni is God is everything. Whatever you need in life, God is, God is omni. Inspired by Psalm 139, inspired by Psalm 139, O oh Lord, you search me and you know me. You know when I sit down, you know when I get up. You understand my thought from far off. You search my path in laying down and are aware of all my ways for there is not a word of my tongue but behold O lord you know it uh, uh, full fully where shall i go from your spirit or where shall i flee from your presence if i if i ascend to heaven you are there if i make my bed in, in hell you are there if i take the wings of the morning and dwell at the ends of the sea even there where your hand shall guide me god is always there so they make these three statements about who god god is especially when you go to difficult difficult times especially when your country goes to difficult times you have to know who you are in Christ and one of the, and, and and you have to be anchored in Christ you have to be anchored in the word of God you have to be anchored in 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 God and when you do not know who God God is then everything will fall under your feet God is omnipresent what means he is all-knowing God is omnipotent what means he is all powerful God is omnipresent what means he is all present so there are three alls three omnis what you need to understand God is omniscient all-knowing God is omnipotent he is all powerful and God is omnipresent he is all presence so what God told Moses tell my people I am God and whatever you go through in life remember this I am God I am all-knowing I am all powerful and I am all presence no matter what you go through in life let God be God for your life he will take care of you that is what God told Israel and that is what God will tell you to today that in this scripture this three omnis encourage me this three omnis give me hope these three omnis strengthened me this you know when 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 a nation is in a lock lockdown and you know that God is omnipresent that God is omnipotent that God is omniscient then you know that whatever happened to a nation God takes care of that nation when you go to trouble time in your life and maybe you're watching this pro program and you go to trouble in your life you have yeah you have to encourage your, your yourself you have to bless yourself with these words that God is omni what God told Israel he says I am omni and, and and omni means there is no limit in that thing what God is he knows everything so because he knows every everything he, he has this foreknowledge 
he is foreseeing he is foretelling and in some and he is even foreordained god knows the beginning from the end in hebrew they call it the acharit it means he sees things and he sees also the end of things and a lot of Christians, that they think, my, my, my life is going bad. My country is going bad. H how is the economy going to survive this? How is my nation going to survive this? How is my marriage going to survive this? How is my, my financial life going to survive this? How is my church going to survive this? Remember this, God is omni. He knows the beginning from the end. And the Bible says he, had a good, he, get a, he has a great future for, for you. He has a future of hope. And that is so encouraged to know that in all circumstance, God is in total control over my life. That in all circumstance, God is control over the church. With all circumstance, God is control over the nation. God is control over the pol politics. He knows the beginning from the end. And he knows how do we get out of this. And because God is, because God is omniscient, it means it means it means he he knows the things. So so when you when you do not know how to come out of things, go to God. He is all knowing, all powerful, all presence. But I tell you, like the people of Israel, when we are crying out to God, God knew the out outcome. You can trust God. What God telling you today is you can trust me. I am, I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. I, am, I, I was with you at the beginning and I will be with you at the, at the end. He is the great I am for our lives. And because God is omnipresent and, and the Bible says that he lives with his Holy Spirit inside of us. What means when we start to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, that, pow that great I am is inside of us. He did that great power of the omnipresent, omnipotent and omniscient God. It is inside of us. So when we don't know it, we go ask in prayer. The Holy Spirit is with us and he will guide you. He will guide you through all temptations. He will guide you through all difficulties. He will guide you when you when you are sad. He he will he he will guide you even when you make great great mistakes. You have to understand this. You have to encourage yourself with these words. And and Good Hope Christian Center, I want to encourage you with these words. I am that I am is with you every day of your life south africa i want to encourage you with these words i am that i am is with you all the day of your life god is omniscient he is all-knowing he is all-powerful and he is all-present let us pray father in the name of jesus we thank you father that you are omni we thank you father that you are in this place we thank you father that you are with the people father who are watching this program father you are who you are you are in control in this earth father you are in control father over this church you are in control father over south africa you are in control father over pastor wendy father you are in control father of all our situations in our life father i thank you father you are god you are sitting on the throne father and you control father the earth father father we thank you father that that, that, that through your Holy Spirit who works, who lives inside of us, Father. This is how you, how you uh, uh, work your control out in this earth, Father. Uh, we can take dominion, Father, in this earth, Father, to the power of the Holy Spirit, what is inside of us. But first of all, Father, I'm so encouraged. I'm so hopeful, Father. Whatever we go through in life, Father, that, that you are with us, that you strengthened us, that, 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 that we cannot run, f run from, from you because you know where we are immediately father i thank you father what you're about to do father in this time and in this place father father i pray for south africa father in the name of jesus father i bind every demonic spirit what tries to kill the economy father i bind father every demonic spirit what tries to kill the people of that nation father i bind father every demonic spirit what tries to close the churches in the name of the lord jesus christ i declare and decree father in the name of jesus father that every shutdown father will be broken in the name of Jesus father and we declare and decree father whatever happens we know this father you are in control thank you father for what you're doing in this time and place mm -hmm.